Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another, um, I guess, episode of Cast 5 Reviews, where we review the ongoing series called Bleach, ongoing for us, but it has concluded since 2012 in anime. 2016 for the manga. My name is Fize, and I'm joined once again by my wonderful castmates, Theo and Farhad. Hello. Hey. What is going on, guys? Do you guys remember the season being as good as it was? I actually completely forgot what happened this season until I saw it again. I was like, oh, shit actually did go down. I, I swear, I didn't think this season would live up to the hype as I remember it in my head. But as I started watching it, I was like, oh, yeah, no, this part was pretty cool. This part was pretty cool. What about you, Fred? I- yeah, I thought there were some parts that were really cool, but then there were some parts where... Kind of dips, like, right? I don't know. Yeah, it kind of dips, like, especially with the Chad moments. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> with Chad, it's just like, I have a fist. And it's just like, well... You mean... Have sword. But he has a bigger fist. <laughs> oh, yeah. my. I know. You're... But there was definitely some highs, though. There was definitely a lot of highs. 100%, because I sincerely remember the chat moments not dragging out as much as it did because i was just like yo just 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 come on beat him up let's go let's go nobody cares nobody cares man because knowing where he leads to i don't know why they gave him so much uh uh screen time but before we dive into that and we had hopes for that guy we had so much hope i know i he, com- he looked like a main character he was like the sidekick yeah, no, they they really spent a lot of time building his relationship with uh with Ichigo. Ichigo. But before we dive into uh further into the video, we want to let you guys know that we are Cast Five, where uh we review entertainment medium all throughout uh anything that we generally probably like. So we're talking about movies, TV shows, animes, uh games, and so forth. And hopefully. You guys enjoy it as well, but otherwise this is pointless. But the reason why we mention this is for anyone that's new, uh, coming uh, new uh, and, and just landing on our video for the very first time because of the YouTube algorithm. But for the returning viewers, thank you so much for joining us one more time. If you have a chance, please take a moment right now to hit that like and subscribe button to make sure you turn on and hit the bell to make uh, to ensure notifications are being sent through. While I say that, let's use some Elgato magic and show you guys this small little graphic that's popping up right in the bottom. See, like, oh. subscribe, and turn on notif- notification. Beautiful. But, uh, exactly. <laughs> but moving from aside from that, we are going to be diving in to Bleach Season 2. Oh my dear I'm God! Step and not a step closer to the thousand blood or thousand yes, year blood war. Yes, I am so happy that we were able to hit our bi-weekly schedule, and it's just gonna continue going on, guys. We're on this boat. I know when we hit the bounty arc, it. it's get it's gonna get a little dicey, but we'll we can make it. We can make it for heaven. I believe. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> I remember. It's all flooding back. The memories. <laughs> But season two, the entry, released in 2005, uh, originally aired March 1st and went all the way up from episode 21 to 41, ending in July 19, 2005. The English run ran from February 10, 2007, two years after. Oh man, two years after. With majority of the dubs now are like a simultaneous cast, right? It's kind of crazy. To July 15, 2007. Wait, are they? I thought it was just the subs are simultaneous. Class. Some some of the dubs, man. Like uh, the oh. I think it's l- about three weeks or a month at most. Because Dragon Ball Super, uh, the Japanese came out the the uh, Dragon Ball Super the Broly movie right came out yeah. in December, and then for us it came out in January. I think it was like three weeks after. It's crazy. The times how yeah long time back in the day been. how long it took like months for the English version to come out. Even the sub itself, like the if you wanted to see the unofficial sub, it would take about twenty four hours, forty eight hours. But uh, the ones that were official, if you were lucky enough that someone actually picked up the show that you wanted. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, well, you better fucking learn Japanese. One hundred percent. But yes, I do. <laughs> Join, but uh. Based on what we've discussed last week, I kind of want to follow follow something similar. Do you guys recall where you guys were when this season, uh, this particular season came out? 
It's in high school. Same thing with me. Yeah. yeah. Probably at your it's house. Last season, yeah. pretty much. Because I remember I was taking calculus courses at this uh, Tamil tutor. And there was this one guy that used to watch Naruto and Bleach. So every single Saturday, we used to sit down and talk about Bleach. And I distinctly remember the fight that he had with Judambo in the very beginning, Ichigo. And he stops, stops it with one sword and he's holding it down like that. And you're just like, what the hell going on? How is he going to be able to like, you know, how are they going to improve his strength? And he stops the hit. And it was such a hype moment. Such a hype moment. It was amazing. That moment, I remember, it was like, oh, God. <laughs> he wasn't fighting monsters anymore. He could finally fight humans. What? I think that's what Not made the second season that much better, too, was that he just wasn't fighting hollows anymore. It was against other motherfuckers that were killing all those twice his size. Right. Like, I do like the fact that it's a, it's a very huge sudden shift. Like, when you go into the Shinigami world, A, we, we know that the world of Shinigami, based on where you're living, they have their own sec- different sectors. So, Burn the Witch, when that came out, they talked about that there is a soul society that's very European, that's near England kind of thing, right? So, this is like very feudal Japan. This is this is your soul society. And for some certain reason, every single time that really showed us what soul society looks like, it's always <laughs> the slums. Like we should, is that afterlife, man? Am I gonna get am I gonna die? I'm gonna Go die ahead. and be so be poor, bro. Come on, man. Right? That was supposed to be the good the good part. Yeah. Like, Rukia is like, yeah, society is a nice place, you know. And we see it's like, what exactly is nice about this bitch? Yeah, like, these kids are, like, fucking robbing kids, robbing uh, merchants for water and candy. They're starving. <laughs> like, like, what? <laughs> Basically, I don't know to shit when you die, starving. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kinda nuts. But the world building. Like, though. I have to say... Mm. Life got worse after going into heaven. <laughs> yes, yes, it seems like it, right? Like, death ain't the end of this. Death ain't the end of this hell, bitch. No, one hundred percent. Got more. You got more uh, suffering on the way. One hundred percent. But what did you guys think of the world building? The whole Shinigami world. I thought it was. I liked the whole Gote Thirteen. Mm. That the whole yeah. Serate. There was different sections, and there wasn't like you know, like the numbers didn't really matter. Like what captain division you were, captain division one, two, three, thirteen, fourteen. Like it didn't matter. Like Kempachi, what what number was he? He's eleven. He's eleven, and you'll we'll find out more. But this man's a monster. This man's basically this a monster. This guy's a beast, bro. Like every single division has their own like special talent. Twelve is. Um... 12 is supposed to be uh, research development. 11 is the fighting ones. They, they're the ones that go right off the bat uh, into any kind of war. Uh, then you have four that's supposed to be the healing one. First, obviously, being <laughs> Yamamoto Genryusai, his uh, division, which, holy shit, man. Old people in uh, anime... <laughs> Especially don't fuck around. Old ripped people. Old ripped people. But we don't even know that he's ripped. He's gonna work. He's gonna be shown later on that he's ripped. But the opening. What a drastic change from asterisk to this. Especially liking the fact that even though majority of it is a lie, <laughs> like those fights never fucking happen. <laughs> like the majority of it is a lie. But at the end, it ends off with uh, Ichigo fighting Renji one more time, and he's fighting Renji. It's it's funny because like it's not he's not fighting Renji where he actually fought him in the anime. He's fighting Renji in the same arena where he learns Bankai because you see swords all around. So it's like they kind of sort of foreshadow that there's going to be something different coming. But and okay. they fully give the fact that Ichigo defeats him. <laughs> so I didn't like that. But well, I mean, what do you expect? Well, he's the main character. He's obviously gonna beat him, but don't like give the fact that he's gonna slice his and his hair is gonna open up and everything. Like, I'm come on, man, leave something to the imagination. It was during the time when animes just would spoil everything in their intro. They didn't give a fuck. <laughs> they were just like, "This is what we're about." It's just hype, man. Hype. It just the... randomly shows an image of the new villain. Like, Who the fuck is that? <laughs> 
But it's uh, probably for the manga reading people or something. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of give you guys a little bit of like you know foreshadowing. Oh hey, remember that what you've seen? Yeah, we're gonna animate this. But but the start of what you guys think of the uh, opening? I love it. I honestly, there's not one opening from Bleach that I don't like. I would agree. I even the bounce They're ones. So good. Yeah. Even the bounce ones are really like. I yeah. hate bounce. I hate the bounce. Yeah. I hate that. I would mostly agree, we, but mm-hmm. the ones I didn't like were so forgettable. I don't even remember why I don't like them anymore. Fair enough. Fair enough. I know they did. The some... third ones, yeah, I still remember them. I- Ichinohana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the season three one. No Hana. There's no spoilers. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, FYI, this full spoilers, guys. I'm just joking. This is like we're reviewing yeah, the this is all season. spoilers. <laughs> this is all spoilers. But entering the world of Shinigami, seeing seeing the afterlife for the first time, and you're like, okay, Gote thirteen, uh, Serite, This is what this is the military aspect of heaven, and yes, they actually, and they actually have cops in yeah. the afterlife. For some reason. Well, clearly, bitches are going around robbing merchants, selling water and candy, man. You need those. You need the Soul Reapers. But I I was shocked how come in the, uh, uh, I think it's called the Ryukon district, how many people did not like Soul Reapers? Because they thought of them as like really uh, arrogant assholes. Right? It, it, it did show a lot of divide mm-hmm. between the two sections because, I don't know, like... The, it's like one side is so like destitute broke, like they mm-hmm. don't have like solid like stone structures. Like they, they're living they're in huts. They're orphanage. living in huts. They're wearing like raggedy robes. They're barely eating food, and it's just like then you look at their side, and these guys are like, whatever. I'm a prince. Especially Biakia. Like, we'll anyone in class? Anyone with class? Yeah. Oof. I was gonna walk around and eat anything I want and exactly move anywhere. Right? It's like. You could don't you could totally see the difference, and I think they weren't gonna they weren't doing anything to kind of help them out, or I don't even know if they could. Mm. I don't know. That the, whole situation the thing was so is, weird. To the common people, like don't even see hollows, right? No, like hollows don't go into society. Yeah, so to them, it's like, what the fuck are these guys even? What the fuck are these uh, soul reapers even here for? One what what are these cops doing for us? Aren't they supposed to protect? Like, so they can't see hollows, right? The guys in the in the, the other town, the regular. The... I think I think there are no hollows in a soul society. No, There's none? Like... no. Whenever anything breaks in, it's always emergencies and stuff based on what the movies are, right? Whenever something major happens, it's always Ichigo <laughs> fucking guy yeah. brings so much death and destruction. But whenever something major happens, like it, the way the way it it was phrased, when the walls came down. And as Ichigo and uh, the party was supposed to enter Serite and the walls came down from uh, from up top from the Royal Palace, it felt like they no one had ever fought in a very, very long time, right? They were all rusty. They were, they were aching for some actual battle, but it didn't seem like they were really doing much. They were going to different places to like actually fight Hollows, which is probably the real world and stuff. But in, in, in reality, it, it doesn't seem like they were doing much. Yeah, so sorry they did fuck off. Mm. They're just basically protecting a castle, it seemed like, right? They're protecting like their portion. Or like or their yeah. their version of Soul Society. So I'm sure like there's not Gote 13, but maybe different versions. Like there is different versions of Soul Society in different areas, but maybe they have their own version of Gote 13, right? But on that note, let's let's just dive in, guys. From from episode one, we'll just kind of go down down the road. Going in, there's one thing that I noticed that this particular anime does that I think My Hero Academia, it's because it's new, or even um, Demon Slayer, uh, does it a lot better. Is in when... Okay. Bleach has an issue with... A lot and a lot, and I truly mean a lot <laughs> of just giving you fucking details about the environments and enemy powers. There's a lot of talking and discussion oh, when it comes yeah. onto it. Oh my god! And 
that's traditional some, shonen. Yeah, it's it's traditional shonen battle manga. Exactly right, but I don't think I don't know if uh, if Dragon Ball Dragon Ball did it. I don't really recall. I remember them obviously like seeing the series like six seven times. I don't think that there was. Uh, fuck, what's the word that I'm thinking of, man? Filler? Hmm? Not not filler. Not well. well Dragon Ball had mm-hmm. a lot of filler. Oh, Bleach had a lot. Um, like talking instead of showing. It, it's it's to kind of give you guys uh, where they just kind of dump a lot of plot points at the same time. Why am I blanking out on this word? It starts with an R. Just a lot oh. of. I keep thinking resolution, but it's not resolution. <laughs> but uh I get what you mean, like Yeah, like how um Naruto is always talks about like I'm because he does this, I'm gonna do this and whatever. Right. So okay, I'm just gonna move past it because my brain is like completely fried, guys. After after working, my brain's completely fried. But uh but, but yeah. I would just say like in Dragon Ball, what they did is they just talked about power levels and that's it. They just said power level and then they moved on to beating shit up but yeah in bleach and stuff they always talked about power is this making strategies Plus, cause, like or... each uh, everyone had like such different abilities so it kind of i could see why they did it but yeah there was just so much explaining i i really like the fact that when he you came into the world yurichi is all of a sudden giving you all this um um all this background about what how soul society works who jadambo is and all, all all these different things which is kind of neat but it's like one person says it then it cuts to uh, Uryu oh, saying, hell. yes, Uryu's like, do you really mean this? And then Oriyime, how is he going to survive? Like, every single person gets their own frame. You can tell that this is also because budgetary reasons and animation and so forth. But, like, I really didn't like the fact that the moment Ichigo got dropped, because My Hero Academia does it really well. They'll show the powers once, and later on, they'll never mention the powers again. It just pops up. The names will pop up. And they'll say what your uh, unique trait is. So that that ki- is really kind of cool. Naruto, they do their stuff. They, they show it. And then they talk about it. Here, Bleach is just like... And later on, too, I know that it, you started explaining your abilities to enemies, and they made jo- and they make a, made a, a joke about it in a Thousand Year Blood Work as well, where he's like, "Why are you telling the guys your uh, and uh, your abilities?" Because the guy ends up masked. Uh, I forgot what master masculine I think his name is, and he just beats the guy. But anyways, he like I did not like I did not enjoy that part. I did enjoy the fact of how much world building. That they actually did in terms of in like three four episodes, quickly showing the vice captains, quickly showing the captains what they look like, kind of giving you a little bit of intrigue that hey, every Zanpakuto has a second stage, every Zanpakuto then later on you learn has a third uh, third stage which is Bankai, right? So Shikai and Bankai, different uh, different divisions do different things. There's so many different people uh, Shinigamis that are getting introduced. All of them are different Zabaktos. So that kind of stuff was really fucking cool. And the Shiba family, guys. Oh my god. What'd you guys think of Shiba? Look, see, they look very familiar, don't they? Uh, I don't... Wait, who are the Shibas again? The, uh, the Shiba family, the girl... Why do I don't remember the, them. So remember the girl uh, that shot, used the cannon? And shot everybody up. Oh, oh, I love them. I love Ganju. Ganju's yes. my favorite. Ganju's my man. <laughs> Ganju's my... That's why I did it. If you said Ganju, I'd be like, yeah. No, that's my guy right there. What about He's you? He's so weak, and I love him. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that that well. I only remember the fight scenes. Do you remember Ganju, the guy with the... Uh, he was wearing all green with the boar. I have some boxes. recollection, mm. but not so much of like the name. Just like... Okay, yeah, that guy was there with them, did mm-hmm. some shit, that kind of thing. So his brother is killed by Rukia. And that is the Shiba clan because the Shiba clan is also related to Ichigo. So Ichigo's dad is from the Shiba clan. That's the reason why Ichigo looks so closely to uh, the uh, the vice captain that Bro. Rukia killed. 
So that all that stuff is going to be later on released. But yes, they arrive at Soul Society. They get stopped by this gigantic monster that has two axes. <laughs> Ichigo fucking... How awesome was that? Wow. Just stops the entire thing. The entire getting his powers back was supposed to take 11 days. He did it in five. The rest of the six days, all he did was fight Urahara motherfucking Kisuke. Back to back. This man's a maniac, okay? <laughs> this man was strong as shit. Like, if Kisuke trained someone, they better fucking go. Or he's going to be like, you know what? You wasted my time. I'm just going to... I'm just going to do this shit myself. Kisuke, man. And the fact that he, all of a sudden, you find out he's one of the captains. They think that his army is invading with Yurichi. Crazy. That was hilarious. Absolutely crazy. But after that, they get knocked back the moment they open the door by none other (laughs) than Ichimaru, man. Ichi fucking, fucking Maru. A stupid grin on his face. What do you guys think of Gin Ichimaru? His little sword Shinso. Like what? first thoughts? Yeah. When you see him, when you see his little bitch ass, I don't like him. I didn't like him at first. At all, eh? But I, when I first saw him, like he's gonna he's gonna betray everyone. As soon as I saw him, like he's gonna betray everyone. The snake like features and everything, right? Yeah. Mm. What about you, Theo? I <laughs> Yeah, I thought he was like the sly guy that's just got some. He's always the. He's like Joker, always got a plan up his ass that he can pour out anytime. But I didn't think uh, he was that. He was like going to be big. Yeah, no, I didn't think he was going to be that big either. Right away, they make you hate this guy off the bat because he just fucks up his uh, Jadamba's arm. <laughs> like straight up. Like, Almost. Yeah. yeah, fucks him up. Ichigo and party cannot no longer go inside. Then they go to the Shibas and they use the cannon to <laughs> blast this, these guys over the wall into the Serite. And right off the bat, everybody gets separated. Then we come to some of the best fucking like team ups that I've seen. Because like Ikaku fighting Ichigo. First fight. And you have to admit that the animation for fight choreography, it, they started actually fucking paying attention. It's no longer oh, yeah. Ichigo just punching or using a big sword and just trying to hit him harder. You can tell that this man actually learned how to fight. Oh, and that he actually has to fight now. He's not just fighting monsters where he can just do whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. That was like, okay, I had to think real smart on how to do this shit. Plus, I think that Ikaku being the first fight was just like a perfect intro of what's to come. Yeah. Because it's just like, he's not even like a co-captain or a vice-captain. He's right? a third seed. He's a third seed. He's yeah. a third seed. But later on, you find out that, you know. He's he better, can be but... a captain if he wants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he could be if he wanted to. But let's be real. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, he, he, oh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> ain't going to captain he's level. Tall, come man. On. Ikaku was bald. He just wanted to save his family. That's why he didn't become a captain. <laughs> yes, we have to mention the Do- Dominic Toretto every single time. <laughs> but all about family, man. But yeah. And with a bit more bald, he could do one punch man or something. There you go. <laughs> I also think his Shikai was pretty cool at first, too, like to witness. Yeah. It wasn't just like a spear, yeah. like it just turned into like that weird. I don't know. I don't know what to call it, that weapon. But... It's a, it's a th- they called it a third. Um, Three part blade or something like that. Yeah. But like with the Shikai, first time we notice that Shikai's are pretty big when it comes down to it, they're part of your Zanpakuto. How crazy is that? It's not, and Ichigo doesn't have one. <laughs> he just has a band. This guy also, is... it's, I also found it weird that his sword never turned back mm. to the original long, yeah. big sword. It just stayed in his Shikai form. But everyone else is as soon as they would finish fighting, it would just turn back to normal. Right. So does that mean he was still exerting pressure to keep it like that? Like I don't. He I don't has know. a lot of riyatsu. Maybe he just didn't know. Yeah, I yeah. don't. Yeah, he didn't some... have practice, right? He didn't have any 
uh, connection with Zangetsu because we did not discuss this, but fucking Zangetsu. Hishikai, what did you guys think of that? Amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Fucking looks amazing. Like, right? I was like, wait, first time watching it, I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this buster sword <laughs> size cleaver? Yo, what is he going to do? And then when he f- initially just releases his Ryatsu to do a quote unquote Getsuga Tensho, crazy, man. It it's, crazy. still lives up to the hype. Still fucking oh, the- lives. Zon Getsu as a character, which just seems so mysterious and cool. I don't oh, know yeah. what it was. Oh, yeah. But I just want to know more. Every time I saw him on screen, I was like, I need to see more of this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, he has that, like, really old man, cool old man face with, like, the trench coat and that long, um, wavy hair. Or... Yeah. How would you describe that hair, actually? I guess long. Like, long uncanny. Long yeah. 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 <laughs> But, but he just looked, he looked like a badass. Yeah. He fucking... Like, I mean, imagine having a badass like that as your sword. 100%. Or your man. sword or whatever. And you notice it too, like the way Ichigo's fighting, it's a lot different than when he was uh, when he was fighting Ikaku, obviously, right? And like the level of confidence that he had when he's dodging, he's kicking the hand away, he's getting slashed on his face. And at the end, when he finally delivers, um, delivers the defeating blow... But his character still remains the same. He never wants to be the strongest. He never wants to be acknowledged that way. All he wants to do is have the strength to protect his friends. And I like the fact that he mentioned it multiple times that he owed Rukia. He wasn't doing it because, oh, she was my friend and blah, blah, blah. No, he felt a life life debt to her. That he felt that he had to repay. Again, he won't be able to forgive himself if he at least didn't try. So any- Yeah, I thought that was good. I, it wasn't just this normal old, I gotta go save my friend because friend. Mm-hmm. You know, like, what, what there's an actual it? motive to it. Yeah. It does become a friend, but... Well, I mean, yeah, they're friends, but it's just not... That's not the sole fucking reason. Like, yeah, you know? like, there, there's a yeah. different motive behind... Like, it is a life debt. At the end of the day, she yeah. told him stay back and everything. Really? He almost became a hollow. Went through all of that, all of the process, and then he finally ended up um, achieving the strength that he needed, that he felt he needed to invade the afterlife <laughs> and take on these guys. A straight up, no, no other strategy or anything like that. Just like, nope, fuck it. I'm going to wa- beat the guy, walk through the door and somehow save Rukia. I really, I really like the fact that he's still a teenager at heart. Whereas, guns blazing. <laughs> yeah, guns blazing. Whereas Yurichi and Urahara, they just have different fucking plans, right? But after that, oh. after the econ, sorry, go ahead, Theo. Yeah, well, I mean, it's Urahara. I don't know if he has more plans or Gin, uh, Gin has more plans. 100%. Yeah, right? 100 because the moment he's like, oh, you open the door, oh, you're from Ura, like you're from that team of Urahara? Right off the bat, just fucking Shinso, knock you out, close the <laughs> fucking door, bye, done. Like zero fucks giving. That's the one thing I really liked about Gin. That he did not, he did not fuck around, man. He did not fuck around. Also cool when you find out what his powers actually are compared to what you initially think it is. Yeah, just a long sword. <laughs> yeah, it's just a long pokey sword. Like that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's basically like a light, like you know those kid lightsabers where you extend yeah. it, it comes out comes like out. that, and then retract it. He's and like, then... guys, give me one second. Give me one second, guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're fashion. Remember what Joey said in Friends? They were fashioning a long poking device <laughs> <Yeah>, <exactly. laughs> to go across from one balcony to another. You hit the ugly naked man. But uh, once they break apart, Ikaku, he defeats Ikaku. He stays back. He heals him. Uh, We move on to another fight. And you guys all know this fight. That random guy, which is with the seventh seat with Uriu and Orihime. Oh. (laughs) With the little flying blades. No, 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 no. That's... Not that one. It's a small little blades that where he's like, I, I, I have the, I'm the fat, I have the mo, something wind attack that he he has, but he yeah. crushes his sword, and there's all these small 
Uh, the small blades. shuriken yes. little thingies oh. that would fly around. I remember that. Weren't they just running away from him the entire time? He was going after Orihime. Yeah. He was and going... Uri was like shooting... Oh, no, Uri U- 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 just shot him like three three times to defeat him and that's it. And he's like, I've <laughs> cut his soul uh, soul chain. He can no longer be a Shinigami. He's going to lose his powers. Uri just fucked him up. But like, they... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I, I think I was thinking of when Ganju was running away from that peacock uh, person. What was his name again? Yuma, Yuma Chika? Yuma Chika, yeah. That's what I was thinking of. But like, goofy characters or not, but like, Squad 11 never really felt like they were... Like, some, some people were assholes, but like, the higher seed powers didn't seem like they were that bad. And then we see Kenpachi, this guy with pointy hair with bells, when and a small kid on his shoulder... Just with an eye patch, running around trying to find Ichigo. And the kid had pink hair too, like really bright <laughs> pink, pink hair. hair. And it, it's, I I loved it. I loved the fact that they were introducing all these captains. Byakuya didn't seem like he really gave a fuck at all. And um, one second, guys. Uh, it doesn't really seem like he gave a fuck at all what's going on and everything. Renji seemed a little thrown off. And Kenpachi just like, I just want to go fight, guys. Let me just, let me, <laughs> just unleash me. Let me go fight him. That's all. I don't think he was like, the I don't coolest. even know if this guy is good or if this guy is bad at fighting. Mm. But he seemed kind of good, so I mm. want to test. Exactly. And then uh, right after that, we get... The Renji fight. That was a pretty sick fight. That was a really good fight. Honestly, for what it was, for like a vice captain fight, as he's like, you know, slowly building up the ladder of fighting mm-hmm. Soul Reapers, I thought that was really good because it showed the difference between like, you know, a guy like Ikaku and Renji. Like, you know, they know different styles of combat and like, you know, just different methods, really. And it's the first time that he starts talking about what Urahara taught him, right? Like, if you're fighting, you you got to fight for survival. If you want to protect your friends, you can't run away. You got to fight to uh, protect your friends. Like, there are different things. And if you if you strike, have the intent to kill. Like, these kind of things that he was mentioning, like, he was actually coaching him throughout, like, how to actually fight these Soul Reapers. Then this 15-year-old that just got his powers versus these guys had it for, what, 10 to, like, 100 years? And Gente Kajan that they, they have, that marker that when they go through, uh, Ren- Renji mentions it, they go through the world, it suppresses their power five times down. And he's like, I'm five times stronger than what I was. And Ichigo still beats him. He almost loses because there's a lot of slashes that he gets. Oh, yeah. But he he does it. He goes with the intent of killing. You see the resolve in his eyes. At that final slash where he releases so much spiritual pressure that before he even slashes, his sword shatters and he just one hit. Bam. That was, that was so amazing. That's the first time you see a sword fucking shatter, too. Yeah. It wasn't just cut in half. Like, it was, it was exploded. Yeah. Like, yeah. fuck. Like, broken into pieces. Like, how is how is he even going to get that shit back? Exactly. That's right. what you want. I think I like, cut up, too. That shit. Yeah. Straight, straight through. But yeah. Straight through the chest. Well, yeah, the in yeah the injury was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. But for me, that fight was like like it was the rematch that you've been waiting for the entire time, and yes. they delivered. They actually delivered like, early on too. It wasn't just the old Ichigo that got a bit stronger mm-hmm. in power levels or whatever. No, it was a fully changed Ichigo that adjusted to match what Renji is. Ranji's position to match Ranji's position in social society and exceed it. Mm-hmm. Like that's what Uruhara taught him. Yeah, he and taught him to know how to fight in society yeah. against a vice everyone. captain, like yeah. at least a vice captain level. And what I really, really liked about like from that point on, so they kind of sort of trickle down soundtrack here and there. And now like when the trailer came out for thousand year about Borg and their uh, music is one of the things that everybody really liked uh, about bleach. And you notice that they kind of sort of giving a few, a uh, few things here and there, 
but nothing really major. And then with that fight, you really start feeling the pump up moments and the hype moments. And at, right after that fight, they go into the backstory for Renji and Rukia. And guys, like I did not remember that episode having that much impact and emotional impact. The scene where they, oh, yeah. grew, they grew up together, uh, th what they used to do to survive. Because in Soul Society, if you have low Ryatsu, like you don't need to eat. But if you have a higher Ryatsu, you have to eat. Then to the point where they're like, yeah, we were together for a very, very long time. And then we decided that we need to join Soul Society. And you look behind, the camera pans out, and it's all the graves of their best friends. Their little group that was together. And you felt it. You felt like how much he cared, how much she meant to him. But when the Kuchki family came and adopted her, he didn't really have much choice. Like she finally got what they were they were chasing, and she got it given to her. Like in in a silver platter. So why wouldn't he? You know, he didn't she, just start at the lower level. She started fucking royalty. Exactly, yeah. and like being being part of um, the slums, you can tell like it, all these people that were in the Cerite, that were in the academy, the Soul Society, Soul Reaper Academy. Sorry, they all were either from different statuses and so forth so they if they looked at you if you were from a lower class uh caste they will they would like you would be they would be making fun of you like you would have they would turn around and obviously like you know bully you and stuff yeah but it was cool when renji got into uh what, what was the school they went to to learn how to become soul reapers yeah, soul, soul reaper academy soul reaper, soul reaper academy so I thought it was really cool because then, like, in school, you totally see the difference of what you were talking about of, like, just, you know, royalty and, you know, slums mm -hmm. kind of person and how they get treated. But it was awesome seeing that Renji was awesome. obviously struggling. Mm -hmm. And Rukia obviously being amazing at doing, uh, what was Riyatsu, the spell? Riyatsu. Riyatsu. Riyatsu and the little keto spells. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, she was improving in that. But Renji was just obviously failing at everything at first but the he's show a that, vice like, captain how yeah much he's a, and he's he now worked? he's a vice captain too now so it so, really shows like just how much captain to anyone vice yeah. captain to bakker yeah of all like one people. of the most ruthless like, captains you know, that guy ever is be. Hecky. and yeah. that, and that's the thing like not like he he like he cared about her so much that he ended up becoming the vice captain of fucking Byakuya who adopted her so he could still protect her like that kind of stuff I really truly like cause like that kind of character depth they didn't have to give Reggie at all <laughs> but yeah. when he's like holding holding on to him he's like I blame you because you're the reason she's gonna die and I can't do anything about it and then later on he's like please protect save her and Ichigo looks at, uh, looks at him and says yeah I will you, you kind of see it you're like okay I'm gonna leave everything to you because I don't have the strength to challenge that man. But if you can beat me, maybe you can stand up to them. Because you just fucking invaded Soul Society, man. And you're just taking everybody on. One after another. And it's the same fucking day he fought Ikaku. Because it's nighttime when they find, like, the, the sun's setting. It's evening, sorry. When he finally beats uh, Renji. So, fuck. Ichigo, man, his Ryatsu. Oof. And the thing is, it was only one week. Since he got wrecked mm -hmm. and had his uh, sword cut in half. Only took this guy one week. What took him like a hundred years or some shit. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Really, I really like that too. Like at first when you're watching the episode of Ichigo and Reggie fighting. You're thinking, oh fuck this guy. He's the one that took Riku, uh, Rukio away. Mm. But then later on. You find out like, oh, wait a minute. He didn't want to do it at all. He's just like, you know, kind of forced to do it because, you know, it's captain's orders. Mm -hmm. And he knows he can't really outpower Byakuya because, well, it's Byakuya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, how are you going to stop this beast? Yeah. This guy was so fast that he tried hit... to outpower. Sorry, go ahead. I yeah. wouldn't try to outpower. I wouldn't try to outpower Byakuya. 
Exactly. Like you had that's what he did to him. Yeah, he fucked up Ichigo two hits. And yeah. the second one, no one even saw it coming until they go back and slowly show it to you. It's absolutely crazy. After that, we get get a little bit of a Chad moment. <laughs> Him fighting Kiraku. Oh yeah. <laughs> was that a really a Chad moment or was that a Kira oh, that guy's moment? I can't okay. really <laughs> Here's the thing. I almost fell because I really want to mention this. Yo, why did Chad get so much screen time? Uryu and Orihime are barely in the season. They fight the that tw- seventh seat guy with the uh, with the shurikens, and afterwards they just stay lay low. But Chad's like going in by himself, taking out all these soul reapers, and then fucking goes up against Kiraku Shinsui Kiraku. Are you kidding me? This guy oozes strength. <laughs> With the flower kimono sitting down, offering him like uh sake and everything. Come on, man. Like, did you never see your He's playing Japan. with you, man? He's playing with you, bro. Chad, come do, on. Do man. they not have shown in manga? Like, did Chad not read any shown in manga? <laughs> to know not, not to watch any shows. Come on, man. <laughs> like, do you like do not fucking challenge this man? Like, he was that did Ichigo not land you his shown in manga? Yeah. Come on. Like, he was literally fighting a losing battle to a point where, like, I remember... Okay, nostalgia is a powerful fucking feeling, man. Watch, Remembering the fight versus re-watching it, I don't know why I thought Chad had a chance ever. Because <laughs> remembering it, I'm like, oh, you know, he's going he's gonna to power up and he's going to hit him. I don't know how he's going to knock him out and blah, 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 blah. Here, it's just like, no, Kiraku is just, like, tilting his neck. One punch after another punch, just dodging it, barely even moving. Like the power scaling is insane. It's I and I uh, I don't know why the fuck they showed Chad so much. Why not Uryu, man? Why not Uryu, man? Like you see, like he's basically on, on an equal footing as fucking Ichigo. Mm-hmm. But then we gotta go fucking look at Chad, go punch some people, and then just lose. By the way, he does lose. Yeah. Is that that is in the season, right? Like literally yeah, he, after he loses, which triggers Ichigo to stand his ground to fight fucking Kenpachi. So let's go watch the Kenpachi fight. I don't <laughs> want to talk to Chad anymore. That's that's probably the reason that Chad is there to yeah. bring out the friendship power. Ichigo. Only reason. One hundred percent friendship circle, man. <laughs> the heart of the guards. Died, man. <laughs> No, but like we get introduced to um we get introduced to Kenpachi. Kenpachi shows why he's the strongest oh, fucking captain. Oh, Ichigo badass. attacks him yeah. head on. And he does not make a dent. No cut, move. no nothing. And instead his his hands are bleeding because that's how much force he put on on uh, on the swing. And we real realize that Ryatsu plays a huge part. Way bigger part. Way than bigger we part than we originally yeah. thought. Because I originally thought that everyone could just cut anyone. It didn't matter what Ryatsu level you had. If I just got a cut on you, that's it. You need Ryatsu to do magic, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like you need Ryatsu to actually just use magic and so forth. But you didn't know, realize that. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. We thought Ryatsu was like the magic resistance stat or yeah. the magic stat. But Kido and like, Bakudo, yeah. Everything uses, everything uses the it's every stat. It's just how much Ryatsu you have. If you don't have a lot, yeah, if I release everything, chances are you will die. And they started doing the whole the, the gravity thing that they do with the lines. And like whenever you release a Ryatsu, the color darkens. You see all these lines and people get pushed to the ground. I really like that element that they actually show how how much Ryatsu can oh, affect like the you. Pressure. The pressure. The pressure for yeah. Because spiritual Hanata, pressure of something. Exactly. Uh it is spiritual pressure. hundred percent Because like yeah. Hanataro, poor guy going around healing these traders because he just wants to save Rukia. He's like <laughs> knocked the fuck out <laughs> when Kenpachi comes into the picture. And no matter how far Ichigo ran, he always felt Kenpachi's spiritual pressure because it's just that massive. And he had the bells too. So every time 
Yeah. Like, you just hear the bells. It's like, oh, fuck, where the fuck is he? Exactly. He's like a boogeyman. And that's the, that's one thing I really liked about Kampachi is that they were just like, yo, he's so bored. And he puts handicaps on himself just to enjoy the fight a little bit. He's like, good. He has you can... so many handicaps on himself. It's crazy. He's like, good. Um, you can finally hear my bells. So this man just sitting around just waiting for him to see, oh, you beat Ikaku. Maybe you'll be able to do that. And Ikaku giving Ichigo the warning that who's whoever the strongest, the captain's gonna come after you. So Ichigo, yeah, Ikaku was uh I liked him, man. He's uh he was a funny character. His well, lucky dance. I, th- I think that was <laughs> I think that was the entire uh section though, the team. Mm. Everyone in that team was pretty straightforward. Mm. Yeah. I mean so with, I Sen- with Senpachi as your captain, of course. Where the fuck are you gonna hide? Mm-hmm. And uh, Chad loses. Of course, Ichigo's it's like, to be expected. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta make my stance, and I gotta, I gotta beat this man right here. And he finally gets that cut, that epic a very slash small up, cut. a small cut of blood splattering, and they're like, "Oh, okay, so finally, you're getting hardened. Excellent." And then Kenbachi fucks him up. <laughs> I remember the moment too. Uh, Ichigo's like, "Yes, I got him. I can actually beat him. I could do this." And then, he, he, and then Kampachi just does this. Yeah, and pokes the sword at his sword. He's like, "You know what, man? I'm just gonna push deeper. Yeah, and deeper and deeper, and you're dead. And that's it. He's just like, you never, ever, ever lose your focus enough to unsharpen your riatsu because, man, it's like for me, it's like I'm cutting. It, uh, uh, I'm just cutting butter. Like your sword is like a butter knife." And the only reason why Ichigo lost that oh. focus... Sorry, go ahead, Tayo. Uh, his, his sword was like butter. Yeah. Like a knife through butter. Yeah. Knife yeah. through butter, yes. hundred. Sorry, you, you're absolutely right. Butter knife is actually iron. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right. But uh, but yeah, like Kenpachi is the only reason why Ichigo got a little bit of uh, bravado was because Kenpachi didn't have a second release. His sword is in a constant release form. So you're like, oh, you don't have a Shikai, you don't have a bug. Like, you don't even know there was a Bankai. But okay, fuck it, let's go. Let's do this. And he fucks him up, gives him the, stabs his chest, gives him a gaping hole, and walks away. And he is, and who shows up, guys? Not my main man. None other than motherfucking Zangetsu. I just asked them one question. Do you want to win? Or do you want to survive? He's like, I want to survive so I can win. There's no point in fighting (laughs) if I can't win. So he's like, okay. And we are introduced to White for the very first time. Oh, yeah. White. Oh, my God. The way he... Oh, my God. That whole fight was so cool. Because, like, you just see him using the Zanpakuto. Totally different from how Ichigo used it. He's using the bandages to swing it like it's nothing and just tossing it. Kratos. It. Right? <laughs> He's like... <laughs> Zangats is saying that Yo, just because you know my name doesn't mean that at the end of the day, you and I are partners. You really got to take time to understand who I am. And seeing that moment where he's like, I'm sorry, uh, old man Zangetsu, like you are ma- my master. Like, let me l- t- l- lend me your strength so we can actually fight together and win. And he finally gets his sword back. But I have never seen Ichigo fight ever w- with that ruthless intent to kill. Like the way White was. Yeah. I, the I, way... Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Thea. We have oh, no. I was just going to say, the way White just seems so ruthless, it's just like, I just wish Ichigo had some of that, because he was so ruthless. And White, like, of all the people that Ichigo fought, I think White was the one that intended to kill Ichigo yeah, the most from the beginning. Yeah. Straight off yeah. the bat. Like, zero fucks given, I'm going to kill you and take over your body. And... He looks a little bit like a hollow. <laughs> Not gonna lie. The voice and everything so forth. So let's see what the future has in mask. store. The mask, right? So let's see what the yep. future has in store. Love that mask. But holy crap, man. And I remember watching this fight 
with Theo the very first time it was released. And it's a frame. Ichigo powers up. He's standing up. And that song is uh, kicking in. Dun, 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 <laughs> you know? And Ichigo just power out like the Ryatsu vanishes. And the next frame, he just slashes Kenpachi. But not just slashes him. He fucking almost tears off his arm. And, it, and Kenpachi is completely thrown off. That speed... His arm and everything in the way. Exactly. Like, the, that intent, like, I have to beat you now? I gotta go save my man, fucking Chad? Because he's taking on some guy who's bringing sake and beating the fuck out of him. <laughs> With, like, the, the now throwing uh, flower petals. That was a pretty funny scene, too. Basically, a drunk guy was starting all his punches. Exactly. And that fight fucking just goes off the rails. The amount of brutality, how many cuts, no matter how many times Ichigo's cutting him, Kenpachi is just reveling in, yeah. in, with joy. He's so happy. He finally has someone where he can actually fight. He can let loose. And he fucking takes Someone off. that can hurt him. Someone that can even draw blood. But not he's happy that so. Someone yeah, he's that, happy that someone can actually cut him. Exactly. And then he takes off his eye patch. <laughs> this shit gets real. What you guys initially thought when like that he takes off the eye patch and you just see a huge massive fucking ray of Ryatsu just shooting up this man's going Super Saiyan 8. What did you I think? Couldn't believe it. <laughs> I actually couldn't fucking believe it. I was like, why the fuck is this man even wearing his eye patch? He's so strong. Yeah. <laughs> Is it At that point, I thought, I thought, um, like, wait, he can do that shit? How? But yeah, the eye patch, man, like, the fact that it's a monster that keeps feeding on his Ryatsu? Craziness, man. I Absolutely. would have never thought of that. I would have never thought that that How was another... Generate that much Ryatsu to begin it, with. Exactly. Because he was even describing it. Thing? He was even describing it as, like, it takes a lot of my Ryatsu away. And you, when you look at it, it's just a bunch of fucking teeth mm-hmm. and shit. And it's like, I don't even want that near anything. Eating his eye. eye. <laughs> eating his eye, man. <laughs> Crazy. And he revels in it eating his eye. Yeah. And then right after I, all... I, he lives for pain. He lives for he the pain li- of battle. He loves it, man. He absolutely loves it. And... Y- he would be perfect in the Dark Souls world. He, he would, would love that game. He would love it. And Yachiru, the vice captain, fun loving, like running around, ma- making like taking ke- calls, uh, Kenpachi Kenny, making him run around, uh, trying to figure out where he needs to go to fight uh, Ichigo. She releases a little bit of Ryatsu because uh, the scout comes in to tell her that, hey, FYI, a fucking captain just died. So, this this was something that I really enjoyed. I enjoyed it this time around too. And the first time I was watching it, I really liked it too. That they didn't go into the politics of like how, you know, how Attack on Titan does and so forth. Like none of that. It was just like, it was straight up murder mystery. Is it Ichimaru, Gen Ichimaru that went in and killed Aizen? Because like, my man Aizen, man, Wearing glasses, making like sweet looking uh, face. He's such a sweet man, writing letters to Momo, the vice scout, like his vice captain, who really cares a lot for him, clearly. But when she and then she finds him dead up onto uh onto the wall. But one thing that he really starts seeping doubts in is the fact is why on earth is Rukia getting executed? Yeah. It's it's a it's a big crime for sure, but execution. Like, and a captain literally just died in your, you know, your domain. Basically, it's not like outside your or in. Yeah, mm-hmm. like literally happened in your backyard, and you're just being like, you know what? No, I'm gonna go execute Rukia. Deal with it. <laughs> but I think the reason why he was uh, why why he died was because he was asking questions why Rukia is being killed and he's she's not killed by like the Sogyoku Hill was designed to kill a captain class level fucking Shinigami 
So you're talking about Kenpachi level. Rukia barely even has Shinigami powers. So why on earth are they using that to, you know, execute her? Which is a fair point. They could have just removed think, the... Like that hill, you look at it, just know that shit's for like a level 10 ritual or something. Exactly. They're using it... They're using it on like some weak-ass member. That doesn't even have like, powers right now. She barely had powers to begin with right now, right? So... That part was kind of like, okay, like he's seeping doubts. Renji's kind of like, okay, something's off. Byakuya doesn't really give a fuck because he's like, I'm just like, yo, you listen, you're, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. This is the last time I'm seeing you. You're getting, getting executed in three fucking days. This is what it is. And they put, up, they put her in this in tower that all it does is a small little window that you can just stare at the place, the Tower of Repentance, where you <laughs> stare at the place where you're going to get killed. So you can repent for your sins. Craziness, man. Hey, we got crazy. It became Princess Peach. But yeah, exactly. But I like the fact that the moment, moment Momo saw Aizen like bashed up to the wall, she just went at Gin. Zero fucks given, charged up and just at him. And only uh, Izuru <laughs> went his Wabi oh, skin. Yeah. Wabi skin. <laughs> he was able to stop, uh, stop her and say, yo, this is my captain. I understand you're going through a lot of uh, a lot of emotions at the moment, but back the fuck down. This is my captain. You and I go way long. We're friends, but back the fuck down. Really liked it. And then Toshiro Hitsugaya comes in my like, man. A, like a fucking <laughs> champ, stops one blade with a with his feet and the other with the hilt. Captain level stops both of them, and this guy is a prodigy. Wonder what he's gonna do in the future. Only time will yeah, tell, see, but we know like, it. looks like this cute kid that's kind of emo looking, but damn, he's good. Yeah, he just stopped two vice captains. One completely losing her fucking mind because, like, this captain she idolizes just died in such a brutal way, too, man. That was fucked up. That was really fucked up. Damn. He's, like, up to a wall. Like, what the fuck? Exactly, right? And then, uh, yeah, after... Kenpachi releases his eye patch. Yeah, the thing is, mm. um, when I watched that scene, um, like the first time that I watched it, I didn't really pay that much attention to it. But the second time around, like now that I know, well, what shit went down later on, it's like, oh, I forgot this shit happened this early in the game. Mm -hmm. I thought like all these uh, plot points happened a bit further in. That's what I thought too. I did not think they were like right off the bat, like so quickly. Yeah. I'm surprised it started off so early. Yeah, Damn season hell. two, back to back. Ichigo and Kenpachi go one one shot in. They both lose. They both get hit. Ichigo technically wins. Kenpachi says he wins, but I don't think. I think it's more like a draw. Is, uh, yeah. But I do think Kenpachi won. I I do think yeah. Kenpachi won because oh, yeah. his sword broke. But otherwise, like, let's be, he got up and he walked away. Ichigo was going to die if it wasn't for Yorichi, uh, who turns out and is Pachi no longer... And was like, I'll let this tree grow a little so that I can fight it again. Yeah. I think personally that's what did happen, too. Yeah. And then Yorichi shows up. And we find out he's not a, he, he's not a cat. He's not even Person. a he. He's not a he. <laughs> it's not a he. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the Flash Division, uh, the uh, special ops, and she is known as the god, the Flash Goddess. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, and she gives, she heals him up. Ichigo, we find out that the second time around, there's a mask on him that re resembles a hollow, and he realizes that oh shit, Ganju is about to get uh, attacked by Byakuya because we finally get to see Byakuya Shikai. He disappears. It's flower, rose, uh, cherry blossom petals. And that's it. Ganju just gets cut up into so many fucking pieces and just like almost dies. So Ichigo takes the this um, device that's like a wing and he goes in to go save Rukia and Ganju and Hanataro. And takes on Byakuya for the very and, for the second time. And there was another captain there too, right? Yes, it was, it was a Byakuya. 
The guy with the white hair. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm so blanking on his name right now. Let yeah. Me, let me just Google it very quickly. I think I say a lot Ukitake. of captains with white hair. Ukitake, yeah. Ukitake. Ah. Yeah. Man, the man just man took on two captains, bro. Holy yeah. shit. Joshiro U- Ukitake. And he is Rukia's captain. And uh, Ichigo shows up. We now find out that his Ryatsu level is about of a captain, which is fucking nuts. Like, this guy definitely has the same powers. It's like and the, he's not in Bankai. Yeah. And he does not have a Bankai. And he challenges Byakuya. Byakuya does the exact same thing, the flash step, and Ichigo stops it and says, I can see your moves. <laughs> and I literally flipped everything when I saw it. That's <laughs> yeah. it. And as he's about to do his Shikai, Yorichi comes in and stops Byakuya. And that's where the season ends. Pretty exciting stuff. Really exciting stuff to end it off on on a season. Really fucking exciting yeah. stuff, man. He matched Bakura and forced his hand to the next level. Yeah. And it's kind of just like you want to see what's to come after that, too. Exactly. He's just, he literally just, he was confident enough to take on two captains. Yeah. And actually just push the saving early and just get everyone out. With all the injuries that he had on him after fighting Kenpachi. Not even yeah. fully healed yet. And I have to say that, by the way, the word that I was thinking about was revelations and exposition. Exposition oh, yeah. wow. is what they always give you and revelations like after, doesn't matter. We're moving on. <laughs> so it was bugging me throughout the entire podcast. But uh, but yeah, like it's it's absolutely crazy, man. Like that's where they ended. Like what's going to happen? What is Yurichi going to do? Turn back into a cat? Like I don't understand. And how come? I do not understand why the cat has such a masculine voice. Like, why? Why does she do that? Just to fuck with people. Just to fuck with people. Yeah. yeah. And Ukitake and Byakuya know who Yorichi is. We obviously, I, I said she's a flash goddess and so forth. Uh, but holy crap! Like watching it for the very first time and not knowing, like, hey, what exactly she's able to pull off, and she's able to do that much craziness. Absolutely craziness. I think that she was a cat the entire time too. It was just nutty. Mm-hmm. So you could have done yeah. so much. Why didn't you uh, go help Chad, man? <laughs> yeah, you just let him die, man. <laughs> He's Wasn't like, she with Chad? Uh, originally, you yeah. Stop back, yeah. But he, she stopped. He's like, no, nah, fuck this. I'm out. You can't win. Exactly. <laughs> but let, I am very excited to see what the the next season holds, guys. Because I. I'm I'm shocked how much I truly enjoyed watching rewatching season two. The entry, season two yeah, is definitely better than season one. I think so far. I think so too. I think so too. Yeah. The world building was a lot better. A little bit of exposition in the very beginning is like, oh, this guy does this. He's this. He's that. I get it. It's this needed. I but the amount of confidence that Ichigo brought, amount of confidence Uryu brought, they kind of hint a little bit of his powers. Chad getting fucking wrecked. But I like the fact that all the uh, the vice captains, they how they are with each other, how the captains are with each other, and introducing motherfucking Yamamoto Genrisai. Come on, man! I Come want on. to see what this man does. Division first. What's Ugh. really surprised about season two was how quickly it, sh- it shifted from the season one of Monster of a Week into something else like usually most of the week shows they keep it that way for like two three seasons this one is just single season monster next season great up man versus man battle yeah they really expanded the world quite a lot introduced so many characters so many fucking characters because let's be real even in the later on seasons they never introduce as many characters as they did for the Soul Society exception yeah. might be the Quincy arc because it's 25, uh, 25 letters, right? So that might be the only exception, but this is like a whole world that they introduced. Every, the, oh, all and these the thing is, mo- a, lot of, a lot of these characters, they actually stick around. Yeah. So the side characters so- are actually massive. And you just see a lot of them on random episodes too coming to, you know, 
Actually, no, never mind. That's future episodes. <laughs> I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want to ruin anything. Zap, I'm sorry. Zanpakuto good... Zanpakuto art, since it's not supposed to be canon, but the um all the designs and everything were done by Kubo, so it's like half canon when it comes to it. That arc just by the sheer amount of how many captains and how many Bankais and Shikais and Zanpaktos they show, like it, like keeping where it leads to versus where it is now, it's kind of crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. How quickly they built the world, how quickly they introduced everyone, kind of gave you an idea of what the power skills are, right? Off the bat. And using Ichigo, which fucking makes me laugh because... He's barely in any season. <laughs> later, later on, he's not in a, a lot of like a thousand year blood work. The second part, especially, he's not that big of a focus, right? But here, like fight after fight, Ikaku, Renji, Kempachi. This was his fucking season. And Anabe uh, no, Jidambo in the, in the very beginning, right? Like this guy, like this was his season. And like for a main character, oof, oof. Killed it. I just love the build up too on his power ups on each fight and like what he's learned from each fight. You know, like he was like such a pup when he came in and he fought Ikaku and then he's kind of like learning. He's like, oh shit, you know what? I might fucking die. These guys are actually trying to kill me because I'm invading their shit and trying to get Rukia out. And then it kind of just changes his mindset the more he goes down the path of trying to save Rukia. He learned what, well, like what to do. The one skill that he learned to do in in the me in the heat of the battle, that Gohan did not learn from all the teaching that Piccolo taught him. <laughs> he learned to dodge. He yeah. learned to dodge, man. Yes, he dodged. In air, he dodged. But like even like in terms of like uh, being analytical in between fights, like how he was when he was fighting Kenpachi or even Renji when he's like, okay, his sword moves three times. The third time, it's uh, and he's remember what Urahara taught him. The, depending on the swing, the last hit's gonna be the hardest because that's when your power is you're you're draining your power, so you're gonna go at it a little bit more. Like all these things that they were teaching, he it kind of stuck with him. So which I really liked, and then obviously fucking Zam, uh, Zangetsu, man, oof, fight and Zangetsu. Any hopes for the future, guys? Do you think uh, season three will live up to the hype? Because season two. I'm shocked how much I enjoyed it. I, yeah. I, I, because I, to me, it's season two and season three are like combined. Like it's a blur. Yeah. Yeah. Like I didn't even like, know actually. Those season two, two is, is two like different. the soul society arc, arc in a way. Yeah. yeah. The four so Yeah. And season like two is part one and part two. Exactly. And season one, like season two was really fucking strong. Yeah. It was a good start. It was a really strong start to a entire new story and uh, subject they're bringing up to the anime. Mm -hmm. so I thought it was a really good start. That was a really good way to pull you into Yeah, it really did pull me in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Alright. That would be it for us, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. If you stuck around for this long, um, I hope you guys <laughs> enjoyed our <laughs> random Random nonsense that we mentioned in the middle of exposition revelations. And I just don't remember words in, in general because our brain is fried because of work. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we like shooting this content. In the comments down below, let us know, did you, did this season live up to your hype? What were the best moments for you? Is Zaraki Kampachi really a fucking beast? And or is like if he takes on white with the same level of intent to kill, who would win? Comment down below and let us know. As always, we are available on um, on a lot of podcasting services on uh, Google, uh, Apple, Spotify, you name it. Please make sure to leave us a review. It always helps helps us with our channel. And we also have a Patreon. If you like our content, if you like to come, come and support us, that's an excellent way of doing that. But that is it for me. Any, any last word, guys? No, we're going to watch season three get a recap on that next two weeks and i uh, hope you guys enjoy our next episode 100 percent, theo same <laughs> excellent i mean if you're excited for this episode you guys will probably even be more excited for the next next one that we're gonna do season three is i hope it lives up to the hype and the nostalgia that i remember i i hope it captures every moment I really Just do. listening to the song Ichiri no Hana, I was yes, already ready. Of course. 
With that said, guys, as always, wishing you all nothing for good vibes from your friends at Cast Five. Ciao. Bye there.